steer settings. Well, I think most of you know how to do this, but we'll go through it one more time. Bring up the steer form and on top there, if you haven't got to this point where you turn the wheel and the green bar goes back and forth, then there's something wrong with your wheel angle sensor. That's first thing to set up. Of course, we'll make more videos. But if it's going backwards like it was showing there, then you go to the Arduino settings and you invert the wheel angle sensor. Send and save it. Bring up the form again. Now when you turn to the right and you turn to the left, then the green bar uh, shows appropriately. You want a negative steer angle when you go left and a positive steer angle when you go right. Next thing we're going to do is the, the WAS is zero, the wheel angle sensor is zeroing. It's fairly critical to do this. The easiest way is to just drive straight out, just look at something in the distance and make the tractor go straight. Hit WAS zero and you should be should be there. You can fiddle around with it, you know, but uh, the easiest thing is just to hit the WAS zero when you're going straight and go faster than slower. You bring the bottom of the form down or you can touch where it says set, act, error, whatever. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the counts per degree. So you initiate where you drive steady. And what you do is you're going to make a half circle. So pick like 15, 20 degrees. Hold the steering wheel still and drive around in a circle. And there you can see our calculated steer angle is 15.1 but our actual is like 16.8. So we're going to adjust the counts per degree so that the actual is what the calculated steer angle is. Now this isn't an exact science either, but uh, it does help you get pretty close. Do it again with a sh either start sharper or a little less, like a different steer angle. Start, drive that half circle again, and see how close you are. Make sure you go to the right so that it's a you see that you drive towards the right because when we go we'll do it left we'll adjust the Ackerman to match the right hand direction. So there we are around 124 for counts per degree. It's pretty close. Now we're going to go turning to the left. Start the same thing again. Start the recording. Make sure the wheel's nice and steady on your own flat ground and not going too fast. Make that half a loop and it comes up to 18.7. Our actual is 21 degrees. Now the Ackerman, it adjusts the left wheel. So if it's higher or lower, in this, in this case we want to lower the Ackerman value so that the steer angle m matches up with the actual. So there are, yeah, our Ackerman's around 89%. Crank down the steer angle a bit just to keep things in check when you're first setting things up. Okay, now we're going to use the drive function. This is about all this is good for is just to make sure it kind of works. I haven't able, ever been really much able to set anything useful because we have to do that for when you're following a line. But this tells you. You can see that we engaged it and the steering wheel cranks all the way to the left. Well, that's not right. It's supposed to zero itself out. So we go back to config. And then back to the little Arduino dude and invert steer motor so that our steer motor turns the other way. Now sharp guys are going to know what I did wrong just right there. Uh oh, another thing turns the other way. It's like, what the heck are we doing? So we go back to config, back to the Arduino tab, and lo and behold, it never saved it. So you have to send and save for sure if you want to save it. Otherwise, you can just exit and then it doesn't save anything if you got lost or whatever. But you have to send and save in order to save it. So now when we hit drive, engage the steer motor. There, now everything's turning the right way. So this is step two, basically. You just want to get it to steer straight or steer to the right direction and, and that. Okay, and I'm going to attach an IMU, a little more stable, and just make an AB line, and then engage it and see what it does. You just with the default of 85, 150, 23, and 13, it won't steer perfectly. You can see how it's 9, 8, 7, 6, the distance away from the line is slowly creeping down. You know, it's slow to react, but hey, it's auto steer.
you're already pretty close. So what we want to do is uh, you bring up your line jumper and kick it over and just see if it catches the line again. If anything goes weird or go crazy, you can see it's not the fastest reacting, but it works not too bad straight out of the box. Three, two, one, zero. If we crank up our gain to think that we want our motor to turn faster, you can see it it helps, but it maybe still doesn't follow the line quite as good as it should. Now the low value it goes from the, the max to the low on sign of kind of a slope. And then the min, what the min does is, and you can see it wiggling back and forth, that constantly sends power to that motor to keep it turning. But if it's too high, then the motor never stops. See, and all these kind of work together. And the best thing to do is just adjust one, make the line jump over, and then see what the effect is. And you can fiddle around with these, but generally, like if it's, if it's a steer motor, kind of about where it is, like on the screen right now, is a really good place to start. I mean, you can fine tune that min so that it just starts to turn as soon as it's off of off of zero. But you can see that it hangs in the line pretty good. Here we jump over the line, cruises over, cruises back, and it's on that line pretty quick. Now the look ahead, that if it's too far ahead, it'll wander back and forth. If it's too close, then uh, it really wanders back and forth. So that's kind of a sweet spot. And the look ahead gain, same thing. The faster you go, the farther you want it to, to be out there. Now, if our counts per degree is too low, and we jump across the line. You see, it takes forever to get there. Because it's not steering far enough. If we turn up the counts per degree, and jump over a line, Now it just go back and forth and back and forth. And it still kind of works. You can see how it you know still gets to the line, but it's just not as good as if the if it's in the right spot. So yeah, I mean you can just like I say fiddle these you know one at a time. There, put the counts per degree back to where it should be. What was it 124 or something? because that's what we calculated out with uh, at the initial part of the video there, setting our counts per degree. And it works pretty good. Jump a line over. We're there right away. It's nice and stable. Motor's not too wiggly. All right, integral. I'm going to go on the ditch here at a 10 to 15 degree angle, and it's really rough. So this is kind of where you want to use the integral. So without any in integral at all, what integral does is it adds a little bit of that air, like you can see it's like seven, eight, nine, ten. It adds a little bit of that air to the steer angle and it tries to bring you towards the line. So even though we have no integral set, I mean, we're still within four or five centimeters of the line. I mean, it does work pretty good. But if we add a little bit of integral, now it's gonna to start to steer up, steer up the hill this is a, a grassy slope on was it 12 degrees and it'll try to zero out that air it'll go over a little bit but it should zero out that air and you don't want to do it too fast we got coming up we'll show you how if it's too fast but as you go up the hill you know that integral number which is that number just above the where you set um pure pursuit or stanley button this is like it says 0. 0.0 0.001, 0.002, that counts up, and that's your actual degrees integral value. So test it, same sort of thing, just move the line over, make sure it can catch your line. And here's where you can also figure out maybe if your steering is okay, you know, the steer settings, maybe it's too fast, too slow. Uh, a good slope, like here's 15 degree slope, and it's rough. And you can still follow that line dead on. I mean, you got to be reasonable. That antenna is whipping back and forth a long way when it's really rough ground. So you can't expect it to be zero all the time. Now, if you use too much integral, then it just means you're in too much of a hurry. Because what it'll do, as you can see, 
it'll integrate it'll count up too fast it'll get there before long before the tractor ever will and thinks it needs to keep steering so it'll wander back and forth across the line the integral builds up one way then goes oh crap going integral builds up the other way and it'll wiggle woggle across the line so be really reasonable with that integral I mean you can't jump the tractor over it takes time so uh, so I hope that helps just do one setting at a time and take your time and learn what the settings do and it works it's quite forgiving now so it should work out quite well for you okay thank you